Welcome back to Space Course, my name is Jeff, and today we're going to be looking at one simple question, and that is how the planets in our solar system got their names. Let's learn more about that today on Space Course. Almost all the planets in our solar system got their names from either Greek or Roman mythology, except for one, that's Earth. Obviously the planets and the stars in our solar system have been observable for thousands of years, so it's easy to assume that anything that's been viewable has kind of been already named by humans. So the five classic planets that have been viewable by humans since the dawn of time have been Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. So those, we don't really know exactly who named them and when they were named, but we can kind of assume when and where based on Roman and Greek mythology. So let's dive right into it. So our first planet is going to be Mercury. Mercury is the closest to the sun, obviously, and very easily viewable by the naked eye. Thousands of years ago, people assumed that they would see one planet during the morning and one planet at night, and that would be two different planets. So many uh, cultures and civilizations actually named it two different planets at the time. It wasn't until much later the, the Romans kind of discovered, I think the Romans and the Greeks, discovered that it was actually one planet, just viewable only two times a day. So Mercury is named after the Roman messenger god, obviously Mercury, but in the Greek mythology it was named Hermes. It was actually interesting that uh, when there was discovered that it might have been two planets, in the morning they would name it Apollo and at night it would be Hermes, for the Greeks at least. It wasn't until later that the, the Romans just stuck with one name and the Greeks obviously stuck with Hermes for their planet. So the name is obviously attributed to the Romans, just like most other planets that we were naming. Uh, but they named it after the messenger god because it was only viewable for short times, obviously during the morning and night. So they assumed they kind of tied into their mythology by it would be quickly going from here to there and, and from planet to planet or whatever that tied into Roman mythology. Something that was kind of cool was that Galileo was trying to view it, but it was actually a French philosopher, Pierre Gassendi, who saw it through his telescope because Galileo's wasn't strong enough. The French philosopher was actually trying to view Venus and mistakenly saw Mercury at the same time. Onto Venus, the second planet from the Sun, also known for the, the only planet named after a goddess. Venus is of course the goddess of beauty and love. Not Venus Williams, the other Venus, the, the yeah, you got it, the goddess. So we're not quite sure exactly why it was named after Venus, but it most likely was because it was shown the, the brightest in the sky, obviously being the most beautiful. As with the other classical planets, it was, start, it was thought to be two different planets, again morning and night. And in Latin, they were actually respectively known as Vesper and Lucifer. It's interesting that in Latin, it was used such a harsh term as Lucifer, also known as Satan eventually, um, when the Greeks and Romans were calling it the goddess of love and beauty. When in reality, now that we know more about the planet, it's quite harsh and very hellish and you wouldn't want to spend any time there. The next on our list is obviously the closest planet to me, which would be Earth and obviously the most beautiful and the most amazing, so it should be named after such a cool, strong god or goddess that just brings fear and amazement when you hear the name Earth. It doesn't quite ring. It doesn't quite do it. And the only reason why I'm covering this, I wasn't originally going to cover Earth, but I asked on Twitter and you guys chimed in quite loudly that you want me to cover Earth. And it's so funny because it's it's the only planet in our solar system that isn't named after a Greek or a Roman god. And it's also another one that we have no idea why or why it's called Earth. We, we kind of know the, the entomology of the word Earth, Erda, Erda, uh, Terra, and it kind of continues on from in many different languages. So there's all these, all these words, Dunya, Erda, Terra, it all means soil or dirt that we're standing on. The kind of interesting thing is that clearly no human in, in time, I think, set out to name this place as a planet. I think it was named Earth because this is just what it is. It's just Earth. It's just dirt that we're standing on. And it wasn't intentionally thought of as a planet until much later. So by the time Romans got around to naming everything else they saw in the sky, it was already assumed that this was Earth. And it was already in the Bible. Some of the first known... Uh, writings of the word earth is, is actually in Genesis and that's kind of cool because it's just coming from soil and dirt and again it's not a place it's not a, a, a distant thing it's just where we are it's just our setting so it's kind of that's why the word earth came into being so next up is the the bright red star or Mars as I mentioned in my top 10 Mars facts earlier 
Uh, it was named after the god of war, or the Roman god of war, and actually the Greek god of war as well. Before the Romans got to name it Mars, every other culture has just been fascinated by this bright red star in the sky. So the Greeks named it after their god of war, which was Ares. And since eventually the Romans conquered the Greeks, they kind of took on their name for the, the Greek, or sorry, the Roman god of war, which is Mars. It's so interesting that the things that we covered, again, in the top 10 Mars facts video, I'll leave that link somewhere up in the top, I think. Uh, but the planets have been called so many cool things by so many other countries, the Death Star, Nergal, and there's so many cool words that used to describe this bright red star. It's always been known as the Star of Death or the bright red thing in the sky because it's just blood colored. It's interesting that you would get Venus, the goddess of beauty and love, on such a hellish and bad place, and Mars, the god of war, on a place that, you know, could have harbored life at some point and is probably the most likely place for us to go next. Quick side note about Mars is that the god of war, Mars, actually rode in a chariot pulled by two horses, Phobos and Deimos, and that's actually what Mars' moons are named. We're on a Jupiter now, which has held many names throughout history. Of course, that the one that stuck around is the one from Roman mythology. Jupiter has been hailed with being the god of the skies and has been attributed to wine harvests over the years, in addition of being the god of thunder, and in many times the, the actual planet and sightings of it were tied together with, with battles, and, and whoever would win the battle would claim that Jupiter was helping them because it was the god of the skies and it only came out so often, earning the title for Jupiter actually the god of war, which is kind of sketchy with Mars in the back. Jupiter was the name under which oaths were taken and sacred offerings were made. It was a symbol of the central authority of the Roman Empire. Ceremonial clothing and party attire and just big royal things were obviously always adorned with the Jupiter symbol, or with the god of war, Jupiter's likeness of put on them. Humans today know that Jupiter does live up to its name, in many ways, the largest planet in our solar system, and it also protects Earth by deflecting comets and asteroids coming towards us that would otherwise enter the inner solar system. It also, because of its large size, obviously helps with the, the orbit of many of the other planets and keeps everything kind of in, in a stable condition. A little Galileo side note, Jupiter helped revolutionize the way we see our solar system and the way we see ourselves. In 1610, when he discovered Jupiter's four large moons, Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto, now known as the Galilean moons. This was the first time that celestial bodies were seen circling, or sorry, orbiting a planet other than the Earth. Major support for the Copernican view that Earth was not the center of the universe. So Saturn, the last of the five classical planets, was named after the Roman god Saturnus, the god of agriculture and harvest. Saturn is the equivalent of the Greek god Kronos. And it wasn't until 1610 that Galileo actually pointed a telescope at Saturn and discovered it had rings. Of course, Galileo didn't realize what he was looking at when he first observed Saturn. He thought the planet had two large moons that circled the planet. It wasn't until 1655 when Huygens pointed pointed his much more powerful telescope at Saturn and realized that it was actually full on rings. So again, that's the end of the five classical planets. Unfortunately, the names and discoveries of them aren't super interesting just because they're just named after the Romans and we don't have a name, we don't have a date or time, um, but we're getting into much more interesting stuff now. Uranus or Uranus? That is the question. Interesting part about that, neither of those were supposed to be the name of the planet. William Herschel actually discovered the planet in 1781 while scouring the sky for comets. When it came time to propose a name, he proposed naming it after his patron, King George, which would have made it Georgium Sidus, which is George's star. But unfortunately, the name wasn't very well received outside of England. And considering that every other planet that we know of has already been named using a Roman or Greek name, it wasn't really accepted that, you know, the King of England would get the, the next planet. So of course somebody suggested that we would name it Herschel, somebody else suggested we would name it Neptune. Ultimately, the German astronomer Johann Bode named the planet after ancient Greek god of the sky. Bode argued that as Saturn was the father of Jupiter, the new planet should be named after the father of Saturn. Uranus is actually the only planet to be named after a Greek god instead of a Roman one. So Bode's colleagues and friends agreed with the name Uranus or Uranus. And actually his colleague Klaproff supported his choice and discovered his new element, uranium. If you're unsure how to pronounce the name Uranus or Uranus, I would recommend checking out CGP Grey's video on this very in-depth science and research. Check that out above or in the description somewhere. So after discovery of Uranus, it was discovered also that the planet wasn't orbiting the way it should be according to Newton's laws. 
It was therefore predicted that there should be another planet somewhere in the in the distant solar system pulling on, on Uranus, or pulling on Uranus. Neptune was first discovered by Gale and the rest in 1846, very near the locations that was predicted by a few other astronomers. At the time they used the locations of other planets, Jupiter, Saturn, and Uranus, to kind of predict where they thought this other mysterious planet was. So once it was discovered and located, there was kind of a, uh, a little fight between the naming convention between the English and French, which are actually jointly credited with the discovery of it. So as it was already assumed after the fight between Uranus, it was already assumed that it was going to be named after a Greek or Roman god. And it was already decided kind of as Uranus's uh, failed name was Neptune. They just kind of stuck with Neptune. It fit with the blue color and it just stuck. And most languages today use some some form variant on the name Neptune. So that is actually it for our very short and quick uh, look at the planets and how they got their names. D included down in the description will be a list of all the different planets in many, 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 many different languages and how you can see the different names of Terra and Earth and Erda and all these different terms for all the different planets. I recommend checking that out if you're interested in, in the names. Some really, really cool ones from, from Korea, and from China and just the really cool takes on the names. So I recommend checking that out. If you did enjoy this, I ask that you would click the like button, comment, share it with a friend. And if you think that this video is worth it, I ask that you would subscribe, maybe check us out on Patreon. And uh, just thanks for the support. Thanks for the love and hope to see you guys next time on Space Kids.